So, um, while we wait for our patients to get fully dilated, let us run through the type of sleep lamp that, that I have or that we have in the clinic here. So, um, looking at this, typically this is calzades. This is a calzades sleep lamp. So, some people will prefer to call it seven type. Seven type. Because if you look at the eyepiece, this way, eyepiece and the observation system forms a forms like number seven. Number seven. So another type of stick lamp that you could also come come about is hard straight. So hard straight, they call it L type slit lamp. L type because the illumination system is actually above. So when you trace the illumination system and the observation system. It is forming an L shape. So, hard straight, another name for it is L shaped slit lamp, right? Because the observation system is on top of the, sorry, the illumination system is on top of the observation system. But this is calzade, so you can see this is the observation system. Um, this is the illumination system, sorry. This is the illumination system, and the illumination system is definitely below the observation system. So, together forming a seven shape okay so now apart from this state lamp there is also a path that is also attached to this state lamp this is a z type goldman applanation thermometer this is the thermometer right and this is the knob this is the knob you use to ascertain the power so you want to deploy it you deploy it this way the prism is deployed this way so you want to retract it, you should retract it back this way. Well, this is the biprism, which is known to us already. So here you have the calibration point of it. This is definitely our target. You, you direct the, the focus of the patient to this red target so as to allow you view whatever or to expose whatever structure of the eye you want to expose during your observation. So, um, going further, this is the eyepiece. This is the eyepiece of this, of this slit lamp. So, definitely you look through this eyepiece. So, you can see calibrations, say, there are calibrations on the eyepiece. They are there so that you can be able to use them to compensate for your, for your refractive error. So, different doctors possibly could have different refractive errors. So for you to have clarity of image while viewing or while doing your biomicroscopy, you might have to compensate for your refractive error. So already, this is my clinic, and I already know my refractive error, so I could just click it in anytime I want to um, make use of it. I do not have to always set it, you know, I, want to, I don't have to look into it, trying to make the image clear before I now make it, you know. No, that will be cumbersome, it will, be, it, it will take time. So this is your eyepiece, and um, this is the magnification changer. This is the magnification changer. I can change my magnification, so this is it. So now, of course, this is my slit width adjustment knob. My slit width adjustment knob. This is my slit width adjustment knob. I can adjust the width of my slit. So this is calzades, right? This is how it all comes. It comes in this format. And then, you could see here, filter selection, filter selection. I can select my filter here. And the one on top here, I can also select my width height. Width height. I can change the width of my, of my slit. I can change, sorry, the height of my slit, depending on what I want to achieve. Do I want a conical beam? Do I, do I want a parallel pipe? This is where I choose or select it. Then below this, this control knob here is for me to select my filter. Neutral density, blue filter for for angiography and geography, and there about neutral density. If I want to you know, filter, if I want to filter my my the, the, the light, the illumination, so as not to burn the retina, and there about. So these are the selection um, knobs, what I mean, right? So now, this is the illumination lock, illumination lock. 
I can lock this place. You know, after setting it to a part, after setting the illumination system to a particular degree, and I don't want it to move, I could come here and lock it. I could lock it here. So when I lock it, it doesn't move, right? But when I open it, it moves back into place. So I lock it, right? So now, my observation system as well, my observation system can, 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 can change. I can change the direction of my observation system. So I can remember during specular reflection, I think the observer would have to displace himself, right? So in that instance, you have to actually displace your observation system. In specular reflection, I think when you want to view the endotonia and the tellium, right? So you have to displace yourself at the observer and you shift, you leave your seat, you know, to another different position. So now I can also lock my, my observation system. This is the observation system lock. When I get to my required location, I can decide to lock it so it doesn't move like this. It doesn't move, right? When I open it, it moves. Okay? So this is it. So now this is just my this is just the housing of my bulb. Bulb housing. Halogen. Halogen housing. This is it. Right? It houses the halogen. To put it back into place. If I want to change the halogen or whatever. So this is my joystick, right? So if I want to actually adjust the height of my if I want to adjust the height of the um, both observation and illumination system, right? So I use this my joystick, and this is the rail. This is my rail, right? This is the rail down here. This is the rail, okay? So, um, you know, one of the disadvantages of this calze is that I personally think it is based on the fact that I cannot be able to carry indirect illumination techniques with with these calzeis. I think that's one of the advantages of hat straight over calzeis. Why? Because there is no sclerotic scatter knob. It doesn't have sclerotic scatter knob. What it means is that I cannot individually or separately be able to displace my, my illumination system. So that means all procedures carried out with my calzes are going to be direct illumination techniques. Unlike hack straight. In hack straight, I can displace my illumination system. So that is to say, the point illuminated being different from the point I observe. So because some certain pathologies are seen better when the light does not shine on them. Possibly for you to avoid some artifacts that could get in between in the line of your clarity of vision or what have you. So procedures like um, um, sclerotic scatter, split limba, I might actually not be able to perform them using these calzes. They are best performed using heart strain. So um, now over to my um, patient sitting position. Definitely this is the hand rest where the patient can hold and feel comfortable. Okay, so and this is the chin rest, this is the forehead rest, this is the height adjustment, this is the patient height adjust, patient chin adjustment, if you want to adjust the um, chin of your patient, you use this, and this here, very obvious, is the cantus marker. It's very important, whenever a patient is seated here, you make sure that the cantus of the patient, the lateral cantus, or whatever, can, yeah, the cantus of the patient, of course, definitely the left, la the left cantus, the left lateral cantus aligns with this cantus marker. Okay, so I also have other accessories attached to this slit lamp, right? So, and I will actually tell you the source of this accessory. It's very important. This is my fairly Austin. This is fairly Austin, right? This wonderful accessory here you are seeing. Is called Fairly Austin. It did not come with a slit lamp, but we have we have one of our renowned optometrists here in Nigeria by the name of Dr. Felix Olafisoye that actually fabricates it, right? So it's very affordable. You can also get one for yourself. So this is Fairly Austin. It's actually your Vox lens holder. 
this way. This is Vox lens, right? So you just put it in here. 78D. So this is very essential because while carrying out your fundoscopy, you deploy it this way. So now, why this failure Austin is very important is because you really need to minimize distraction, vibration from the side of the patient and as well from the side of the clinician. Now, some patients could actually be difficult. You know, they keep vibrating or shaking. And remember, when you are carrying out this fundoscopy, your Vox lens, you need to be very much steady with it. You need to be very much steady so as for you to be able to pick fine details on the fundus, on the optic nerve, on the optic, on the optic disc, or on the macula. So you can imagine when the patient is not totally cooperating, there are some movements or vibration from your patients. And then, if you were to use your bare hands this way, if you were to be using your bare hands to be holding the Vox lens in place, that would definitely be clinician error, you know? You could get fatigue depending on the number of patients you are seeing per day. So always holding it in place could create that fatigue, right? So, and you could also tend to vibrate at times, therefore, because little millimeter movement counts in this procedure. A millimeter movement could shift you out of focus from your point of interest on the fundus. That is why you need to deploy this for the Austin. And that was it. Just hold it in place. All you have to be concerned about is your patient to be very much attentive, right? And be cooperative. So that is just it for this our fairly Austin. So when you're when when not in use, you simply take it out, right? So what else have we not spoken about? So um, generally, um, a sleep camp has um, um, the observation system, you know, the illumination system, and the mechanical, mechanical system. So all of this, all of this, where your observation system and your illumination system are sitting on, are called the mechanical system. So, right? So another issue that this sleep camp will have is the fact that it doesn't have a disintegration slash. In the sense that when I'm carrying out endoscopy, I cannot be able to displace my illumination system so as to focus the light um, to laterally, um, to um, vertically displace my illumination system during fundoscopy. This calzes cannot give you that, or hard straight can give you that, right? So I'm not marketing any form of slit lamp, but I think that is my personal observation, um, what I have discovered over time, right? So over here is actually our real start. The real start is over here. This is the real start. So and this is the switch. If I on it like this, I could decide to increase the brightness of the illumination, right? So just come this way. So let's let's see the effect of the real start. Okay. 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 So that does it.